my name is DJ Kalkos, and you're listening to The MBS Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode number 60. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me later will be Daniel. He's kind of out right now, doing stuff. So anyway, this week we have a guest. Our guest for this week is the awesome DJ Kalkos. Hello there, thank you very much for having me on. Glad to have you on, because you're pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. So, before we start the show, I'm just going to call you Calcos, because DJ Calcos is too long. That's totally fine. Okay, so Calcos, before we start the show, I need to ask you the four important questions, even though in the show note it just says two. <laughs> so, um, question number one is, who is your favorite pony? Rarity, no question. Rarity, 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 all the way. It'll be a stupid question to ask, but Why? Um, I just think uh, she's very visually appealing, uh, especially with her mane and, and the royal purple color. I just think that's a great accent to her character. And I also think that she's, she's very interesting. Everything she does is adorable or funny. It, it's less to do with me relating to Rarity because I don't relate to Rarity. I just think she's the most fun character out of them all. I just like it when she's on screen doing things. With me and Rarity, I kind of like her. Whenever she's on screen, there's never a dull moment. Oh yeah, absolutely. So now, what is your favorite episode then? My favorite episode is probably A Dog and Pony Show. Mm. If only because that was the episode where where Rarity became like uh, an actual character in most people's eyes because most people hated her before that episode. And, that, and, and it was that episode that kind of developed her as an actual character. And I also really enjoyed the the, the moral of the of the episode where even though you can be feminine you can still defend yourself and and be independent and and take care of yourself you don't have to worry about guardians or protection and i think that's a very important lesson for for girls to understand at a young age true true and to me the way i look at it is don't judge a book by its cover because yeah she could be feminine like she could like all the dresses makeups and stuff but man if she wants to defend herself or take care of herself she can like Look at the episode. She just did her thing. Like, when she didn't like something, she just said it out. And, oh, stop whining. She was not yeah, whining. Absolutely. She was complaining. And, oh, that complaining part was really fun. Oh, fantastic. Now, the third question is, um, how did you become a brony? Okay, how did I become a brony? Uh, this was back in um, June 2011. Um, I staffed a, uh, a, a geek convention up in uh, Maine, USA, where I live, called PortCon. And I was living without internet at the time, so I didn't know what a brony was at the time. And I found out through this convention. And looking at all these people wearing uh, the small amounts of pony merchandise that were available at the time and having them watch the show all over the place, I was just like, what the hell is this? Why, why do people like this? This is so friggin' dumb. And um, a month later... I went out to dinner with my uh, with my family, which included my brother, my parents, and um, I found out that my brother was a brony. And at that point, I was kind of ashamed uh, <laughs> that he was a brony. I, I thought it was really dumb. But um, after a little bit of poking and prodding from him saying, hey, this is a thing, you should watch it. Two weeks later, um, in the middle of August, I decided, fine, what the hell, I'll watch it. And uh, I watched half of season one over the course of a few days. And I was like, okay, this is a thing. It's not that special, but I can understand why people like it. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, fast forward about eight months to the end of March, beginning of April 2012, and I was bored one day and stumbled across a bunch of pony videos that, um, uh, that I, I just stumbled across them, started watching them, stuff like uh, the Grand Galloping Collaboration, uh, Pony 64, just, just random stuff. And I decided to give the show a second shot. And at that point, I marathoned it and thought, wow, this is actually really good. And it was then that I realized just how much I love this show. Uh, from there, I found Brony State and Pony Chan. Um, and uh, I've been in this fandom ever since. And I don't want to leave. I really like this fandom. Listening to your story, I, I heard a few like that, like, oh, um, somebody recommended to me, I didn't want to, one day I watched it, and oh, now I'm a brony. When was the episode that hit you, that, oh, I'm a brony? When did that oh, episode... Oh, jeez, that's a hard one. I want to say, it was probably, honestly, Ponyville Confidential. And the reason why I say that, it was because that was the first episode 
after the initial rush of episodes that I did back in August of 2011, that was the episode that I actually watched on my own because um, I'm really not too sure, but I really want to say Ponyville Confidential because I, I liked the episode a lot. I thought it was a very deep and meaningful uh, Cutie Mark Crusaders episode about um, gossip, about rumors, and about spreading lies about people just to uh, uh, gain notoriety about yourself or to simply put others down. And I really enjoyed that, but um, I, I think that may have been it. I'm, I'm really not too sure. That's actually a very good question. You'll have to come back to me later. I'm re- I really don't know. Oh, okay, cool. Well, as for me, it, the funny thing is, it's also a CMC episode. <laughs> Um, I think mine was the one that they did the performance. Um, what was it? Um, oh, dang! I'm bad with episodes. Um, that was um. Oh, jeez! I know, I know which episode you're talking about. Episode uh, seventeen of season one, but I I don't remember the title. Oh boy! Let me open the wiki because I'm terrible. Oh, if people are listening, they say boo! Shame on you! You should know every episode by heart. <laughs> um. I, uh, okay. Uh, it's not what? episode seven. 17, 17 is uh, Stairmaster. It's episode 18, Showstoppers. Oh, 18. I'm confusing yeah. 17 and 19 again. Well, at least you can remember a number. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. With um, the Showstopper episode, yeah. It clicked to me because they did 80s rock. And like, what? What? <laughs> watching the live stream and... What, look, no, I, I don't think I watched live stream. I think it was YouTube. Yeah, watching YouTube and like, what? They, they did this? Really? What? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and they're like, oh, great, this, this show is awesome. Yay! Okay, moving on to the last question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? My family could care less. My family is more concerned with the fact that I do work and constructive work within this fandom. They really like that because beforehand, I didn't do anything constructive. I'm also I'm also a big uh, fighting game fanatic, and my local community uh, where I live really couldn't care less either. So most people really don't care. It's just another facet of my personality that really doesn't matter, and it's really no big deal. So so yeah, nobody nobody really cares. Nobody cares. So that's interesting. Like nobody really cares. Like um, what you do. Like nobody, no, not even a passing glance. Nope, nobody cares that I'm a brony. Not one bit. I mean, it, it, if I if I wear the shirt to fighting game tournaments, people might give me funny looks, but they're not going to tease me about it. And if they talk about it behind my back, then it's not my problem. I don't care. I don't. I I really don't care what others would think of me about uh, about being a brony because it's it's really not their business. And if they're honestly going to think badly about me based on something that I like that's pretty damn harmless, then they're not worth my time. So, whatever. Okay, not, not even the occasional bro hoof? When I went to Las Vegas' Unicon, there was uh, a lot of bro hoofs there. And it's mostly reserved to conventions or other events and stuff like that. Uh, basically, like me, when I go to my uh, local game shop, nobody really cares. I tend to wear a lot of pony clothes. And every time I go out to my game shop, I wear my pony shirt like, from Wheel of Fine. And yeah, um, nobody really cares or nobody really talks about it, like even behind my back or anything, because they love Japanese anime girls. So <laughs> yeah, think before you speak, man. Like, you like this character, I like this character. So before you say something, think about it. Think really hard. For sure, for sure. So anyway, those are my four questions. Thank you for answering them. Looks like my co-host is in. And here's Daniel. Hi, Norman. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Just not feeling that well. Oh, um, why? Cold. Going around school. Ah, I see. Okay. So um, to recap what happened, um, guest today is DJ Calcos from Celestia Radio. Favorite- Hi, Calcos. Hello. Okay, cool. Um, favorite pony is Rarity. Favorite episode is a dog and pony show. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. I've got none. What about you, Daniel? No, not at all here. Okie dokie. That was a quick housekeeping. Like normal, I guess. So anyway, in news time, in today's news time, Equestria Girls going to theaters in June? Rumors have been floating around that Hasbro is going to produce a My Little Pony direct-to-DVD movie. 
and also a spin-off show called Equestria Girls. The website Digiplex Destination has listed down airing times for a movie called My Little Pony Equestria Girls. What does this mean? How does this relate to the direct-to-DVD movie and spin-off show? And will Twilight Sparkle still be a princess? Put on your tinfoil hats and let's get ready to speculate! Um, links can be found in the show notes. Um, before we speculate, guys, um, I want to jump to the next one because it's kind of related. Okay. So, the synopsis for Equestria Girls revealed. In the recent catalog from Hatchet Book Group, the synopsis for Equestria Girls has been expanded in book form. The book is called My Little Pony Super Special. Wow, I always say that with Super Special Awesome. But, going on... Yes, I noticed that, Norman. Yes, indeed. Um, the book is written by uh, G.M. Barrow. The synopsis goes, Get an exciting, longer story in our first Super Special chapter book for My Little Pony. In an effort to regain her stolen crown, Princess Twilight Sparkle steps through a magical mirror into a completely new world where some things have changed, but true friendship remains magical. Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, um, what do you think of this whole movie and synopsis thing? I honestly think it's a thing. They're trying to appeal to, to the, uh, the Bratz slash Barbie market, and while it's interesting to say the least, I, I don't think it's going to be anything special. I think the fandom's going to look at it we're gonna move on because it's it's nothing it's nothing special. True, true, but um, I don't know. It's like I've heard rumors of them saying they want to do a direct DVD movie, and Equestria Girl is going to be a its own spin off series. And this is rather confusing for me because how, what, how, why, huh? Well, then again, they are. Well, rumors. here's the thing. Do you know? Do you want to know where these rumors come from? They come, from like slash M- they come from Slash MLP on 4chan. Oh. And this is, this is a group of people that honestly believe people like Sadisto, Dusty Cat, Final Draft, um, and, and uh, Derpy Squad, and all the really big, like Tombstone, Wooden Toaster, all the really big prominent bronies get to watch the new material before it's actually released. And in actuality, they don't. They don't get to watch these things. These people actually believe that they've already seen Equestria Girls because Equestria Girls has already been made and stuff like that. So you can't give any credit to these kinds of rumors. Oh. You can't. You just have to wait and look for official news because official news from the source is the only way you're going to be able to get um, the proper news stuff because a lot of these rumors are just spread by fortune. You, you can't give any credit to them. Okay, I, I kind of understand where your reasoning is. and I suppose, you know, Norman, I, I'm not so sure about this, but I'm pretty sure you get your kind of official <laughs> news from Equestria Daily, of course. Yeah, links are in the show notes. Yeah, true, but the thing is, I don't tend to talk about rumours and stuff, but from what I read before, they've done the whole thing. A direct to DVD is going to be made. Yes, that's true. Um, the... Equestria Girls is going to be a spin-off, that's true. But the whole theatre thing? Like, what? <laughs> they, well, they might be planning it as a big launch, like how they did the wedding as well. Um, no. <laughs> the wedding... You never know, Hasbro's up to this all the time. I mean, they're into traditional PR. Traditional PR? I don't know, I mean... Uh, like, okay, let's just say that what they're doing here is what they say, movie theatre stuff, Digiplex... Um, movie gonna be called Equestria Girls and like we all know some movies like to pull out books before um, the movie comes out like G.I. Joe Transformers whatever and if you do look at the um, Hatchet Book Group PDF download thing um, the logo is My Little Pony Equestria Girls because it's not the normal My Little Pony logo and yeah, I'm not sure. Um, like, I, I kind of like the story, but really, um, her crown got stolen, and that's the reason for her to chase whoever is um, whoever stole it. Well, she has a good reason to chase that crown. It's the element of magic. Okay. Um, okay. I, I kind of forgot Princess Twilight Sparkle. Yeah. yeah like. Yeah. I don't really, really remember her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
the thing is, is that Twilight, Twilight as a unicorn is such an established character that Twilight as an alicorn hasn't really caught on yet, except for being on the butt of jokes that, look, Twilight has wings. The fandom as a whole isn't ready to accept that Twilight as an alicorn yet, so they're going to have to pound that into us in season four if they're going to actually keep her an alicorn. They're going to have to pound that message home. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is, I do know um, Twilight is an alicorn and stuff, but the the other thing is accessories. I, I can't imagine Twilight with accessories. Like Princess Luna with her regal chest piece, her shoes, her crown. Yes, Celestia, even Cadence. Twilight, uh, it's going to take time for me to um, link that in. And that's why I think if you notice all of the toys, and you know I've been stressing on this for previous episodes, her wings are always out. You know, it's kind of, I think what Calcus is saying, one of the ways they're drumming into our heads that yes, she's an alicorn, live with it. Yeah, true, true that. But I, I don't, don't know, Calcus, what do you think? Um, I think that uh, that might be right. But uh, it all depends on whether she stays that way because we, we all know that there are large sections of the fandom that kind of just bailed after the season three uh, finale. It wasn't as bad as a lot of people were speculating, of course, but there is there is a problem that Studio DHX and Hasbro are going to have to um, overcome because honestly, it's uh, we we all know the target audience for the for the uh, for the show is mostly little girls, but it is also for everybody, and they. I, I know a lot of little girls personally. A couple of my cousins watched the season three finale and they were confused. They didn't understand that Twilight uh, was was actually an alicorn. They looked at it with really con- real confusion. I remember one of my uh, one of my cousins immediately after the finale went up to her Twilight Sparkle blind bag and said, "This is Twilight. <laughs> this is Twilight." And they even they don't like the fact that she's an alicorn because while we meet. We may be more specific in the reasons why we like these characters. The little girls, the target audience, like the characters for the same reasons we do. Mm-hmm. So Hasbro really screwed up in changing a huge facet of Twilight's character without warning like that. Well, like the s- there was no warning. It, it just happened. Uh, well, the signs are there when the episode starts. Like, um... Here is the reason why, blah, blah, blah. Okay, she's going to be an alicorn. Yeah, awesome. But I, yeah, I, but the, the episode was only 21 minutes long. It yeah, was still yeah. sudden because the episode was too short. True. But and I mean, as much as you can, you know, justify the reasons for her becoming an alicorn, she's still, it's still something that I think fans and generally the target audience, I wouldn't say not really want, but it does put them into a daze as why. It's the mm, big why. True. The question mark comes up. I, I think the main problem with her becoming an alicorn is they didn't set it up like in season one they set up the gala in season two um what did they set up in season two i don't really remember they, up, and... they, didn't, they didn't set anything up actually in uh, season two there was no arc wow that, that that's bad but i don't know but season two was kind of more character development i think yeah yeah in season and three also they wanted to bring in cadence so they had to find a way to introduce her yeah i mean i i here's the thing i understand why Cadence existed. They want to make a pink, pretty, sorry, they want to make a pretty pink pony toy. A princess pony toy. Celestia. Yeah. So, there you go. You got your pink pony princess. Now well, we've... there was a huge price they had to pay. Lauren Faust left the show because of Cadence. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like, literally, that. That, that, is the reason, that is the reason why she left the development team. She heard about Cadence, and she heard about the fact that it had to be in the show, and she, she said no, because she fought tooth and nail for everything that she got in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. She had to fight so hard just to put in what she was able to put in. Like, there was a lot more plans and stuff that would have made Friendship is Magic much more awesome. But they were all scrapped by Hasbro PR and, and the Hasbro executives. And when she heard about that, she said, no, no, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Mm-hmm. So that that's it. The, she's, she's, she's completely done. Flip table, walk away. <laughs> yeah, like more it, or less. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, like, to me, if they didn't introduce Cadence, okay, if they do introduce Cadence as a normal Pegasus or Unicorn, that I can understand. But the thing is, the whole setup for Princess Twilight Sparkle, that's your marketing toy there. Like, 
if you didn't introduce Cadence, I can understand why you want to create a new Alicorn Princess toy for the little girls to play with. Well, that's just it, is that the more toys, the more the more girls will buy them. And the thing is, is that Princess Twilight Sparkle, the toy has moving wings, it lights up, it has voices, it's, it's, it's made out of sturdy material, and it costs $50. This is not a toy for little girls. <laughs> this is a toy that was made for us. And that just makes it even more confusing. Like, what are they thinking? Really? No. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Wait, wait, you're telling me that the Princess Twilight Sparkle uh, toy from Hasbro costs 50 bucks and it's really sturdy? $50. Okay, 50 Really sturdy? And like... No, 50 50 50 uh, the, the build quality, as in. Yo, I'm sorry. Yeah, 50 American dollars. And it's really sturdy. Like, um... As in, as in, it's it's made as in it's made with material that's more expensive and more durable than the material made in cheaper toys, for example. Yeah, yeah, that. So it's, like, it's kind of better than the Celestia toy. In a way. What? I I, I don't get them. Okay. But uh, you see, the true thing is, Cadence was introduced well. If one thing I must give the DHX team merit for, Cadence had a good introduction. Oh, true indeed. Even though her screen time was like what, um, fifteen minutes. <laughs> There's, there's, there's a, a lot of people. There is a lot of people I know that would disagree with you entirely. Oh, okay. Because uh, Cadence, by by nature of very definition, is still a Mary Sue character. She's there, and that's it. She has no depth to character. She has no depth to personality. She's kind of just there. I mean, it, as much as I really liked Shining Armor, he's the same way. <laughs> there's no real depth to their characters because even though there are episodes that are centered around them. Like, for example, the Season 2 finale, like, for example, the Season 3 premiere, they still have no depth to their character. And so a lot of people are really miffed about the fact that, hey, Lauren Faust left in exchange for Cadence, which was an excuse for Hasbro to milk more money. People were not happy with that. And that's why Season 2 has, uh, the Season 2 finale has such a mixed reaction. Actually, what I was kind of meaning is that I understand that Cadence had her, you know, drops because suddenly what we don't need another alicorn kind of expression but given the fact that you know she was still so something so alien thrown at dhx you know they didn't do a half ass job with you know bringing her in that's what i liked really okay okay i got true. you but, no, th- but i understand where you're coming from as well with the whole deal of the very existence of cadence herself mm, true but technically what i like about okay i wouldn't say cadence but what i like about the episode is chrysalis chrysalis was awesome <laughs> Oh yeah, no one. Everybody loves Chrysalis. Nobody's the, complaining the, about the, Chrysalis. She she's a very interesting character uh, with a lot of um, depth that we could that the writers could plumb whenever they want to. They could absolutely go back and revisit Chrysalis if they want to, and I think it would be fantastic if they did because she's such an interesting character. Yeah. She has a heck of an agenda. Yeah, true. And uh, I think I mentioned it to someone before about is Chrysalis a re- uh, is Chrysalis really a villain? And um, the way I explain it to them, like Chrysalis is just looking for a way to take care of her people or her changelings, whatever you want to call them, and just for them to survive. And her way of doing things is to invade, like any other, like real worlds, like colonization. Yeah, like like in the real world where people go to war because of their beliefs. So is she really a bad guy? <laughs> but many comics have already kind of taken this in as. Cadence is just like everyone else. She's a queen. She has to serve her subjects. Therefore, if you read Ask Tumblr's like Ask Flufflepuff, she's basically a good person, you know? Yeah, but those are hit canons from... It's hit canon, but it's how the fans have interpreted her. So I think, you know, it has merit there. Yeah, true. And also, if you want to go beyond that, um, like what DJ Kalko say, um, Cadence and Shining Armor are Mary Sue and Gary Sue. Um, some of the fandom portray them as real characters like um, us. Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, there's an episode um, if you follow uh, Brony Curious and DigiBrony, uh, their analysis videos, they did an analysis on how character aesthetics can really add a lot of depth to the character when you have a fandom like ours. I mean, I think the best example of this is actually Luna, because back in season one, Luna had about 90 seconds of screen time and a few lines, and the fandom immediately fell in love with Princess Luna. True they, There was tons of fan art, tons of fan fiction, all this thing, all because of her aesthetic design and the fact that her backstory was very 
um, tragic, complex, sad, mysterious. Sympathetic. Oh. Yeah, it was very mysterious, sad, and sympathetic. So people did that. It was the same way with Vinyl Scratch. Vinyl Scratch had literally four seconds of airtime in season one. And people took her because she looked cool. It was standing in front of the turntables, just nodding her head back and <laughs> forth. She looked cool, so the fandom took it and ran with it. Same yep. thing with characters like Octavia. Same thing with characters like Lyra. Why does Lyra sit like that? And and it, maybe it's because she, she knows that humans exist, and she's really fascinated with them. So aesthetic design goes a long way. True, true. I seen I seen the end of this. Uh, I seen that video, and it's pretty good. So, uh, if you want to know what we're talking about, go to YouTube and search for DG Brony and DG. I'm sorry. Um, um what uh, was Brony it? Curious. Yeah, Brony Curious. We'll throw links in the show notes. I hope I can remember. But yeah, true. Um, true. But, that. Um, okay, that's a little bit of a fun fact here. Just a little side story is that, uh, true to what uh Calco said about DJ Pontree and Vinyl Scratch or however you may call her, it's that. A few days ago, we were in class in school doing some effects assignments, so we had to look for some vectors to do some work. So, of course, everyone goes to DeviantArt for vectors because you know their vectors when they're DeviantArt. Yeah. And uh, basically, my friend in class, he's a turntablist up in Penang, and he wanted to find pictures of turntables. And I said, why don't you search for DJ vectors on DeviantArt? And he was filled with three pages of vinyl scratch. And it's something like that. It's like that character, as DJ Calco said, four seconds of screen time has become synonymous with a search term that is so generic. Well, not only that, I'm sorry, not only that, but um, when during the, the start of the Brony music scene, 90% of it was all electronic music. <sighs> and Vinyl Scratch was very symbolic of that. So that's why she ended up becoming very popular early on. And now her popularity has kind of transcended that because the Brony music scene has gone away from electronic a little bit and more towards rock acoustic stuff. Yeah, and not only that, but your song isn't going to get as popular unless it has vocals in it. So it just goes to show how much um, aesthetically better the Brody music scene is getting and how Vinyl Scratch kind of symbolizes the old days where everything was electronic. True, true. It's a reverse of the real world, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And also, the thing is with Octi right now and Vinyl, I'm reading this uh, fanfic by I, I forgot the name, but it's basically it's called Mission Implausible, where Vinyl and Octi are spies, and yeah, to me, Vinyl and Octi they're spies. <laughs> well, this this yeah, is sounds like the Tom and Jerry kind of no no <laughs> no they're spies like secret agent uh, imagine 007 and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty good. Um, I enjoyed the fanfic, but yeah, um, what you guys said was true. Like. Um, this fandom gathers whatever we see and take it and ran with it. Like there's, um, like you guys say, um, Vinyl and Octi, Lyra with Anthropology. There's also a fanfic about Changelings and that's pretty good. I'm sure they're plenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, as, uh, also one more thing to elaborate a bit more on what DJ Calco said about Luna. And uh, we all knew that we were watching and seeing the season two lineup and there was Luna Eclipse. What episode number was that? Um, number four. four. Number four. Now, in the lead up to Luna Eclipse, as the episode approached, more and more Luna art was coming out. And on the night that, the night before Luna Eclipse, everyone was churning out Luna art like crazy because they knew in less than 24 hours... Cannon Breaker or Cannon Yes, there would be a Cannon Breaker. Uh, and it, it was like that. The fandom is just so reactive. It's like I oh bet. God, yeah. the, fan, the, fa- the thing is, is that this fandom, as a matter of fact, fandoms in general are like soda. They're very reactive. You shake them a little bit, and they burst. And it just goes to show that really famous quote from Men in Black: "A person is smart. People are dumb, stupid animals." <laughs> so that's why that's fandoms are basically really gigantic crowds that are spread out all across planet Earth. And so that's why people like to react about these things because they they panic. True, true. Yeah, like no. how me and uh, AC Race best reacted to Princess Twilight being announced, <laughs> more or less. Yeah, I, I bet nobody really saw um, Luna's um, characterization in that episode. Like what? To be frank, I didn't like it. Really? You yeah. know I don't like Luna. Oh, you sun lover, you. Yep. There's a couple people I know that uh, wouldn't like you saying that. <laughs> there are a lot of people I know who already don't like me for saying that. 
Yeah. Oh, it's fine. If, you, if they can't, they'll, the ones that I'm talking about will respect your opinion. They'll just tease you about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had that. But yeah. it's, it's quite simple. I mean, Luna, her, her mystery, mysterious background, I watched MLP to get away from the hustle and bustle of life. So understanding Luna and the way she comes down, it's she's one of those characters that puts me in an uncomfortable situation. Now, I don't like that, but I believe that these kind of characters teach me a lot of things. Like if you walk in after 1,000 years being away, you're still speaking in Royal Cantalot caps lock. You, it's something like me when I'm away for something like when I left for government exams from my choir, from my guitar class, from other things. The moment I rejoin, I'm like, what is going on? What are you all speaking? I don't understand. Oh. And basically, you know, when it hits you so hard like that, you realize that character is basically something like your incarnation right there. Okay, so huh. anyway, before we move on, let's and That's talk- why I love MLP. All right. Okay. Anyway, before we move on, let's talk about the synopsis here because um we've uh, we've uh, derailed, and I, I want to get us um, talking about this synopsis. What do you guys think of the synopsis here? Um, crown stolen, get uh, Twilight jumps into a mirror, goes into a completely new world. Reflections are dangerous. The magic mirror pawn is the first example. <laughs> and now another mirror right here that is going to put them in some even more weird stuff. Okay, but what what do you guys think? Because um, sounds like a good story. I don't trust my reflection anymore. <laughs> I I don't care. Like it, it's a thing. It's there. I I honestly I'll watch it when it comes out. I I honestly don't care. Like I I don't I, I I'm not following it. I'm not going to worry about it. It's not going to affect my little phony friendship as magic at all. Um, so okay. I'm I'm not concerned. Okay. What if it does? Would, would you still have the same uh, feelings towards it? If it did have a tie-in to the or to actual series? If it did have a tie-in, then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. I, I expect a lot of rage. When when that happens, I'm going to call you on. We can rage together! We trail! Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're going to do that, they're going to have to be very, very careful about it. The rage fest. Yeah, we can show betrayal. Betrayal. I mean, there's, only, there's one thing I can comment about this is that all the people that are wondering why, why is this happening? Why are they turning the ponies into humans? Guys, you're the people that spent two <laughs> years drawing almost nothing but humanized pony art. What did you expect to happen? <laughs> all right, not only that, but the Barbie and Bratz market exists, and Hasbro wants to get a piece of that. So of course they're going to make Equestria Girls. True. True. Hey, it's it's only it's only. It's logical, all right. You look at the bronies that do that make so many humanized pony fan art. I mean, one of the most popular tumblers uh, in the fandom focuses uh, a lot on humanized pony art. Lo- uh, John Joseco's Tumblr, Love Tomorrow Love. There's a lot of pony fan art that he does, and it's very popular. So it has, bro. If they found this and looked at it, they're gonna think maybe we can do something with this. True, hmm. true, and also so, so don't be surprised. Don't act all shocked. True, true, and also the the other thing is, went to Toys R Us, look around toys, and the way I look at toys is, huh? Mattel has something. Um, uh, that Monsters High thing. I I don't know who does it. Also has something, and Hasbro has no dolls. Well, except for those huge, humongous, scary looking dolls. Yeah, but nothing in the line of, um, Barbie something like that. Until now. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, they're going to do that. Yeah, true, true that. But still, um, the thing is, it's all about business. We're we're in the middle of some kind of war going on for money. And yeah. Capitalism. True indeed. And well, we have to accept it. Like, uh, they want, they're, they're doing their thing. They're, they're doing their thing. They're earning money. They want to get cash. They want a slice of that um, doll pie. While yeah. we're here, we can just enjoy what we have. Like what Calco say, once that bridge comes, we'll we'll see what goes on after that. But uh, if you remember, a few episodes ago, if you've been following the MBS show, Norman and I had a discussion about the kind of artwork that was used for Equestria Girls. And uh, my argument when I said was there are almost a million better ways to put it. But that kind uh. of artwork kind of makes me feel like, um, no... Because, yeah. you know, the whole deal with Cutie Mark being on the cheek and uh, Norman didn't like the hairstyle and yeah. I didn't like the skin colors thing. So yeah. that was basically kind of how I reacted to it. 
Let, let's just not jump that bridge. I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Thinking yeah, see, about, it, it puts us in this uncomfortable state. Nah, it's that thinking about skin cutie mark on the face. Like, only... I, I know a few characters or people that put tattoos on their face. One is Mike Tyson. The other one is Zell from Final Fantasy VIII. And, yeah, think about what I say. <laughs> and, I know. And, but I'm not so bad with the cutie mark on the face. I'm just... I'm, I didn't like the skin coloring. It's like, if you want to make them humans, don't color their skin. They don't look human anymore. They look like, you know, I don't know how to put that. You, they you, look like uh, elves. <laughs> no, to um, be honest, it, I, when I first saw it, I took it more, it was like furry art, rather than an honest humanization of ponies. Okay, yeah. um, one thing I have to say about that is, the reason why they did it is to avoid this confrontation about Oh, why is Twilight Sparkle white? Why is she not black? Oh, why is she not Hispanic? Why is she blah, 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 blah? You, oh, you... yeah, but they've, they've forgotten about me. Why is she purple? <sighs> See, that's, that's the thing. Like, you can't make everyone happy. And the thing is, you're a minority. While the parents slash adults in the States, um, race is kind of a big issue there, if I remember right. And yeah, it's a big issue everywhere, especially here in Malaysia. But I understand that. I don't know if you were probably through the through your eyes. You know, if you had a daughter, if you're going to Toys R Us, you see two shelves, one with Barbie and the other one with girls in six different colors. Which one would you pick? Just be honest. I mean, both of you. Uh, see that that probably, that probably the girls in six different colors. Yeah, that's Reason a little being, bit. Sorry, um, Reese being because my daughter's going to beg for them so she can collect the whole set. True, uh, true. Okay. And for me, that's a loaded question because um, I have a n- niece here that okay. loves Barbie, loves Barbie oh, to heck, right. and she doesn't really understand ponies. Now, change that to, I have a niece who loves ponies. See, that's a loaded question. I mean, as I'm saying, if you had a daughter, totally you don't know what she's in. You don't know what she's into. You want to get her something for her birthday. You know, more of that, if you look at the two shelves, I would personally go for the Barbie because I would want something a bit more natural than purple and pink colored human beings. Uh, see, like I said, that's a loaded question because A, you don't really know what your kid like and... Yeah, that's the point. If you don't know what your kid likes, because if you know, then you'll buy what you she likes. If you don't know, then which is your more likely choice? <laughs> and here comes the argument. What are you doing as a parent? <laughs> Buying them a toy. No, I mean, what do you do? Because you're not paying attention to what your kid like. That's the thing. If you do, you if you're paying attention to what your kid like, you already know. See, this is a loaded question, and let's try not let's try not to talk about it because all right, all we right. we all don't have kids yet, so yeah. um, we we can't talk about it. All right, well, I all right. hope I don't have a kid. <laughs> same here, same here. Yet, yet. Okay. Anyway, that was news time. News time was rather derpy. Let's move on to the next topic. Yeah. And the next... Just a final note, I have a lot of faith in GM Barrow for this because she writes really, really well. I have a lot of faith in her. Indeed. So anyway, moving on to the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have DJ Calcos. Um, how are you? Are you having fun yet? Uh, yeah, actually, this is a good cast. Thank you. Okay, um, what? Sorry, I didn't hear that clearly. This is a good cast. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. I'm, I'm the part... I'm a bit slow tonight, I'm sorry. I'm partially deaf. And I caught that. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, that's your hearing problem. I have a, like, a mental problem right here. Uh-huh. So, anyway... Kelkos, why don't you introduce yourself to the people who might not know you or what you do? Uh, might not know me. Nobody knows who I am. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't say that. No. Don't say that. Hello, Internet. My name is DJ Kalkos. Primarily, I'm a DJ for Celestia Radio. I'm also a voice actor for Pony to Box Studios. You might know them as the guys that do Doctor Who's adventures. And I'm also a vocalist, and I hope to um, be able to sing for some musicians at some point. I know a couple of them want to collaborate with me, but they're slow and lazy, but such is the life of a brony musician. So you can also follow me on Twitter, at Calcos323, C-A-L-C-O-S-323. I also have a Tumblr, calcos.tumblr.com. Um, so you can follow me there if you wish. I hope to get my YouTube channel started at some point when I think of something to do with it. But uh, until then, nah, I'm not going to promote it. 
Yeah, just send it to us when you're done, and we'll throw it to housekeeping. You're you're also a DJ on Celeste Radio, right? Yeah, yeah, that's my primary function within the fandom. I like to think. Ah, okay, cool. And you also do Teen Foil Head Time, right? Yes, that is one of my shows on on Celestia Radio. Uh, I haven't been able to air it in a while because I've either been busy, been too tired, or I just haven't been able to find any good theories to be able to report. So I actually haven't aired it in about a month. Maybe next week. I uh, maybe not. I'm not too sure. I mean, we'll we'll have to wait and see. But uh, for right now, it's. I guess I want to call it on hiatus. Is it partially due to the fact that we're out of episodes for the moment? Probably. I mean, as episodes happen, more canon happens, and so more people's head cannons get altered or filled or whatever. I mean, there were a lot of theories that happened uh, at the end of season three, but they're all gone now. And I've only got a few, precious few here, and uh, I don't want to waste them. So we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see and check out what happens. But, I'm uh, guessing that maybe... Twilight's not going to outlive her friends as one of them. <laughs> Now, I've got a million of those, and they all suck. <laughs> or King Sombra's horn is not a clue that he's still alive. Got that? They all suck. <laughs> the, most, the, most, the most interesting theories I've found is that the door that Sombra had, the one that hypnotized Twilight and Spike in the season three premiere, created Sombra and is, in fact, the most powerful creature in Equestria. I've got one that um, uh, Top Gun, the movie, predicted uh, Twilicorn. I've got one that says um, uh, that uh, the main six are all just tulpas of Luna. Um, I've, I've got a whole bunch of really great theories. Like, the typical ones are really lame, but the, the most bonkers ones are just fantastic. Awesome. So anyway, uh, let me ask you about Teen Fall Hat Time. How, how did it came up? How, how, did it, how did you start with that? Like, how... <laughs> Um, what happened was is that when I first joined Celestia Radio, I had I, I was on the uh, the subreddit My Little Conspiracy, which is a subreddit all about conspiracy theories surrounding friendship is magic. And I decided, hey Shamrock, can I Shamrock? Of course, who's the the guy who runs Celestia Radio? Really cool dude. Um, I asked him, hey, can, can I do a, a show about uh, My Little Pony conspiracy theories? I'll have a panel on, and it'll be really cool. And he jumped on the idea. He thought it was the best thing ever. So we called it Tinfoil Hat Time, started airing it every Friday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time, Friday into Saturday, and it became a huge hit. But unfortunately, I just haven't been able to air it recently because I'm running out of theories. And unfortunately, people come to me with theories all the time, but I either can't work with them or they're too short. Like, I'm looking for theories that are at least like three paragraphs long and they elaborate. They elaborate, 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 so we can dissect them one piece at a time. But most of the theories are like, okay, this character does this, or this character is in a relationship with this character. And that's it. They don't elaborate. They don't, they don't give me a reason why. Mm-hmm. And so it's really difficult to find good, comprehensive theories that I can work with. And so that's why I haven't been able to air the show uh, in, in about a month. Either that or I've just been way too freaking tired. Okay, so can you explain the process of how your show works? Because as far as I understand, it's somebody gives you a theory, a really long theory. You read it, you expand on it, you dissect it, and you do the show. But can you explain the process to me? Um, what happens is that basically I, uh, I surf around the internet looking for theories. I collect them. I, I actually have a nice collection saved. And um, on Friday night, I gather my co-host, Ryan C. from Derby Who's News, and I uh, also compile a panel of people that, that are able to bounce ideas off my head and other stuff like that. And then I air it, and it's it's a good time. It's it's rather simple. It's a rather simple process. Okay. So it's like a, you know, brony conspiracy think tank in a sense. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um... Wow. This fandom is everything. <laughs> yeah. True, true. Uh, almost. Uh, the, yeah, true. They have everything. Maybe one thing this fandom doesn't have. Uh... I don't want to say because I know. Oh no! So, um, why was why was you derail me? Gosh dang it! No, because seriously, you know, you you were like almost everything. I'm like name it something with doesn't have you know. Oh, I, I uh, going to dark place. No, ah, uh, no. It has dark things, you know. What you I know. About? I don't want to think <laughs> right. about it. All right, all right, all right. We're not that kind of show. We're PG thirteen. Uh, yeah. But, Kathos, could you give me an example of one of your theories? Well, I already gave you a few examples. One of them was um, that the door 
that uh, twi- that hypnotized Twilight and Spike actually created Sombra. And the whole the whole point is that uh, the door was able to create a parallel world and read the minds of other ponies. Basically, what happened is is that uh, for this theory to work, you have to accept that Sombra was corrupted and not always e- uh, evil. And a big reason for this is that unlike other villains, Sombra is normal. He's not a changeling. He's not a draconicus. He's not some all powerful alicorn. He's he's a he's a normal unicorn. I mean, sure, he looks different, but he's just a unicorn as far as species goes. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like the difference between Superman and Batman in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, that Sombra, doesn't explain the big black cloud. Well, well, that's just it, is that this this explains how he got into power. Because if the Crystal Heart has the power to defeat him, then whoever was on the throne when he tried to take over should have no problem doing so. Thus, the only possible ways he could have won is that the monarch of time was YOLO levels of stupid, the monarch, the monarch trusted and was betrayed by Sombra, or Sombra was the legitimate heir to the throne, and during his reign he was corrupted. So leaving A aside, both B and C support that he must have at some point been normal. Otherwise, the monarchy wouldn't have put him in power or trusted him. So, in fact, taking the B route, he could have been that same ruling, ruling monarch that Sombra saw in his door visions. Because mm. um, ah. what happened, basically, is that the door, Sombra kept going to the door, and it corrupted his mind. That's why his eyes are green. His eyes are green because all he's seeing is a vision of the door uh-huh. that, that the door gave him. His vision is... is, is Sight is clouded. His mind is clouded by this vision. With that in mind, Sombra didn't create the door. The door created Sombra. So basically, the door is like the... The door is Hasbro. <laughs> okay, okay, that is one theory. But no, uh, basically, the door is like the mirror from Snow White, where the queen asks the mirror, who is the fairest of the land, something like that? Yeah, in a way. It, it, that's, that's basically how it is. I mean... It also explains um, the Empire's absence, because where did the door come from? And it makes sense that there is a larger evil power at work, and Sombra was merely a body through which said force could do its bidding. Thus, this ah. mysterious force is what made the Empire disappear to keep order from being restored and keep the Crystal Ponies downtrodden. Ah. Control S. Yeah. What, what do sense. you yes. hear my theory about the whole Equestria girl with the door thing? Oh, sorry, Please with do. the mirror thing? Equestria girls at the door, that makes sense. <laughs> sorry, it, it, kind of, it kind of links there. So, um, remember the whole thing with uh, Princess Twilight Sparkles, um, crown got stolen, blah, blah, blah. Remember the uh, Sombra's horn? Yes. Let's just say that horn stole the crown, took shape of a pony and ran through... The mirror, the mirror is going to be that door. Somehow that ah. that door has the power to change forms or whatever it is. That shadow horn thing goes through the mirror, Twilight Sparkles goes through it, and BAM! You're human. Nah. Yeah. It's a, it's a parallel dimension idea, but uh, as Kalko said, like, a parallel dimension that is in some sort of ways the ultimate hell for whoever is looking into it. Yeah, true. Where um, have I heard this before? I told you about my theory about it. No, no, Snow White isn't exactly there. Where is this kind of uh, portal that you can go through that is, gives you the absolute hell custom and tailor-made just for you? Um, Minecraft? That sounds oh, Bill, and Ted's, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Bill and Ted's uh, Bogus Journey. So I don't remember. I just remember the first I one. Heard of it. I, do, I, I do understand that, you know, it's like... It's like uh, Yes, then collect your words. No, it was, it was a, it, I had a paradigm shift when you know uh, Calco said about you know that could be the biggest bad guy around. Yeah, but uh, from official wording from Hasbro, Sombra's dead. Sombra's dead, but then again, it could have just been you know Sombra could have just been a medium in which. Also, also, been. I hate to interrupt, but I just love the fact that they that not only did they canonize that Sombra is no more. They can Hasbro announced uh, that Sombra is dead. Yeah. Which means that he is the first and only My Little Pony character <laughs> to die. Woohoo! Because here's the thing Chrysalis, Trixie, Gilda, Nightmare Moon, um, Discord. Discord, they were all defeated. They didn't die. Sombra blew up. Sombra yeah. died. A, a rather morbid dead, death, if you want to put it in that kind of context. 
And I think that's awesome. You, you, I, I think I, I really hope that this is a sign for the show to be able to kind of grow up in a way. Because true. as much as I really like the show for its juvenile nature, it, it's being held back by it, by the heavy censorship. Because true, again, true. there's a lot of ideas that Lauren wanted to use. Like, for example, Applejack's parents being dead completely 100% confirmed in the show, whereas now it was just confirmed by Sibsy thanks to um, the shooting stars and Apple Family Reunion. True, like, true. it's confirmed among the bronies, but the kids don't know that. Yeah. It's the same I don't thing think the kids know that. Sombra's dead. No, they, they don't. They don't understand the metaphor, and I think they should. It's the same thing with uh, Scootaloo being crippled. The, the whole point is that she's supposed to have this kind of disability where they could make an episode about disabilities because there's a lot of kids out there with disabilities that could really take in and reflect what Scootaloo has to offer as a character. And they could, they could, they could really use that because you look at all the shows that PBS did back in the 90s. You look at Sesame Street, which after one of the recurring characters, uh, one of the, the actors died, they did an episode about death and they they actually talked about it in the most tactful way they could. Or there's Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, which did an episode about, they did a segment about divorce. Wow. And this is important for kids to learn. And I think My Little Pony being arguably one of the most popular cartoons on television right now, I mean, what better for kids to learn than for these characters to be able to show, to be able to talk about that kind of stuff? True, true. That, that, that's like Sesame Street, uh, Mr. Rogers. Those, those are good shows and they do teach morals. And for me, Ponies does that too. But eh, the vision of Hasbro wanting money and want to be safe. Yeah. But I know. And it, it's, a giant, it's a giant shame because it only goes to show that the uh, as much as DHX tries their damnedest to try and make this show as good as possible, the toys are meant to sell the show and not the other way around, which yeah. is how it should be. True, true. But then, as you, uh, you said, for Hasbro, maybe DHX in this case, if you watch Littlest Pet Shop, you know about Blythe having the story that her, it's been said blatantly in the show that her father is single. Yeah. And that is a very strong theme that I, I, it hit me very hard. It's like, wow, there's a cartoon that has the main character being someone who has a single father. Well, yeah, but that's Littlest Pet Shop. Littlest Pet Shop, as much as it is to sell toys, they don't, they don't, rely on the toy market so much with that cartoon. So they, they have a lot more they have a lot more that they can work with with Littlest Pet Shop. But My Little Pony freedom. My Little Pony has always been crap. At least before Generation 4 happened. And I can tell you right now when Generation 4 ends and Generation 5 begins, we're not going to get a repeat of Generation 4 with it being well-rounded characters and really well made. No. Hasbro's going to cut out the middleman and say, no, we don't want the bronies around. We don't want them hounding at us for, for all this crap. We're just going to go back to crap that we can sell to little girls. So mm. when, unfortunately... When Generation 4 ends, so does the dream, so to speak. True, and it's a shame. True I that. can agree with you on that, actually. I feel the same way. Yeah, true that. But the thing is, like, if Hasbro does the whole, okay, we're going to cut off the brony market, we're going to start fresh, we're going to do, like, what we did with G3 to sell toys, they, if they're going into the new season or the new series with that mentality, they're going to fail. Because right now, their current earnings, the first quarter of the year earnings, my Little Pony is their top grossing um, income from yeah from us bronies and stuff because without us they're not making much money. No, I am gonna have to disagree with that actually. Because really? here's the thing: when it when it comes to the merchandise that we buy, we don't buy the merchandise that comes straight from Hasbro. Oh, yeah. We buy the licensed stuff from We Love Fine and Hot Topic. So it shows that Hasbro, yeah, they want our money. They just don't want it that badly. Their yeah. primary market is still little little kids. Yeah, that's true, that's true. I mean, but still, if you do think about it, um, selling license to certain companies do cost, a, like, what, mill or something? I, I don't know, but... It's actually only a, it's only $100,000. That's hmm? it. Really? And that's a drop in the bucket to a company like Hasbro. Yes. Well, it shows um, me what yeah, I know. That's, a, that's an interesting kind of way to look at it, because... I also had this very big gut feeling inside me. I couldn't explain it. Now, no matter how hard I tried, you know, that Hasbro doesn't like us being around. I know, I know there's, I don't, I don't have any particular evidence or ground to say this, but it's just a gut feeling. Yeah. Well, they, they don't like us around because people, bronies will not stop calling Hasbro. Yeah. 
Oh. Literally, no, I'm being dead serious. We are an annoying little plague to Hasbro. I mean, to society in general, only to certain people. I mean, when it comes to the haters, haters going to hate, and you're going to have to deal with that because haters will hate everything. But when it comes to Hasbro, we are extremely intrusive, very intrusive to their inner agenda and their plans for how this property is going to go. So that's why they don't like us. They don't. Ah. It's not that they don't like us because we're bronies and we're we're changing gender stereotypes and and we're leading a revolution. They hate us because we're friggin' annoying. <laughs> True. Dad. Really annoying to Hasbro. True. Dad. I always thought it was more of the Mormon mindset that guys shouldn't like this. No, no way, no way. Hasbro, if, if we're giving money to Hasbro, they're not going to care about that. What they care about is the fact that bronies as a fandom, much more than other fandoms or other groups is extremely socially awkward. Ooh. Very, very socially awkward. My theory to that is this. It's because bronies, uh, a lot of them were very introverted, and then they started watching the show and realizing the power of friendship and how much better you could feel if you have friends. And so they decided, you know what? I'm going to get out there. I'm going to put myself in the public image, and I'm actually going to go out and make some friends. And I'm going to be less depressed, and I'm going to make more about myself. However, um... One thing they forgot to learn after being more extroverted, they forgot to pick up tact and basic charisma. They don't know how to act in public, and so they treat the world like one giant internet, as if everybody's anonymous. And that's where you get all those videos of bronies singing in public and playing with their toys in public as if it's no big deal and stuff like that. That's, that's why you have people looking at bronies and saying, why the fuck are you doing this? You're so terrible. I, it's it's not you that that's why we are bronies as a whole are very very socially awkward and that's why Hasbro finds us very annoying because we won't shut up to them and it's it sucks it really does but if people were to calm down and stop calling Hasbro and stop annoying corporate and just let them do their thing and stop being so defensive about this property then I'm pretty certain things would work out just fine. Just keep buying the merchandise and Hasbro will recognize you as long as you aren't so intrusive to their inner agenda. True, true that because, yeah, in the end, it's all about the moolahs, the cash. Here's the thing I always say or somebody says, bronies, they come and go, but little girls, they stay. And uh, even yeah. even with um, MLP going to season 5, 6, 7, 8, sorry, um, generation 5, 6, 7, whatever, Little girls are still going to stay because think about it. When Halo ca- came out way back when, um, how many little kids played it? Now Halo, as in Microsoft Halo? Yeah, you can just. I don't know really. Uh, I was actually, that. actually, back when the Xbox first came out, not very many little kids played it because the Xbox was five hundred dollars at launch. Yeah, true, yeah. but l- l- Halo, Halo only started to become really popular among the teenage audience when Halo Two came out because most of them already had Xboxes. And they played the original Halo as time went on. So that's that's when Halo kind of blew up among the the audience of, of children. So yeah. that's why. It's the same thing because you got those children that played Halo, move on to Halo 3 and 4 and ODST and whatever it is. And then those kids move on to other things like COD or Battlefield or whatever it is. They still like that genre. But whenever Halo comes back, they're going to latch on to it like, yeah, bronies to exclusive derpy toys. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, wow, we, we're not talking about you. That's wrong. No, oh, but this is like, this is your cutie mark right here, you know. It's, well, that's the thing. I hang around really, with the really guys well. from Derpy Hooves News a lot. And oh my God, those people, they know everything. Seriously, derpyhoovesnews.com. <laughs> Go there if you want the scoop on basically everything. Those guys... No, those guys, they get it. They understand. They're fantastic. True, true. Their news uh, format is really... Well, let's just say that what I get on EQD is half of what Derpy Hills News gives. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it's Derpy Hills News. Like, here's the thing about EQD is that EQD isn't a news site. It's a content aggregator. So if you want Pony News, you have to go to Derby Hoops News or The Round Stable to really understand and get opinion pieces and get the full scoop on everything. Don't rely on Equestria Daily for your content. You have to go to the individual sites that Equestria Daily lets you know exist. True, true, Don't rely true, true. on Equestria Daily, guys. Equestria Daily is a great site. It's a wonderful content aggregator, and it's helpful for bringing everything into one cohesive place. But... 
you shouldn't experience the entire fandom through that one site. That's true. That's true. For this show format, EQD is the best thing for it because it's streamlined. And well, if I go to other sites like Roundtable or The Brief of News, uh, a show note would be complete. <laughs> but that's yeah. just me. That's just me. But anyway, um, Calcos, when we derailed, we were asking you about stuff. So you also DJ on Celeste Radio, right? Wow, that was a terrible yeah, segue. Um, I, I do general music streams, talk to my talk to my listeners uh, about my day and about the fandom and other stuff like that. Um, I do that every Monday and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock East, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I also do Game of Pones, which, yes, the title is a parody of Game of Thrones. Um, every Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Canterlot TV, which is Celestia Radio's television service. So yeah, that's that's basically what I do with Celestia Radio. I'm also planning on doing some voice, some more voice acting for Pony in a Box Studios because I did do some a couple months back, but I haven't been able to do anything yet because nothing's been completed yet. But we are working on it after finals happen and after everybody's not busy, we're going to be able to start getting some projects going and hopefully I'll be in a couple of them. So definitely check out uh, Squeak and On on YouTube. Uh, for for all the Pony in a Box stuff, and and yeah. Pony, so, Pony since in you box. do voice acting for Pony in a Box, can we hear some voices? What did you want to hear? Did you want to hear a, um, a My Little Pony character or anything like that? Surprises. Okay, give me a little bit. Terrible is right. You're a full seven minutes late. That's seven minutes less for you to delight in the wonders and pleasures of Appaloosa. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Brayburn, where have you been? <laughs> nobody, <laughs> that's a, that's a okay, nobody wants a Brayburn, so nobody knows that there are Brayburn BAs that exist. Aww. And I, I, I like to think that I'm one of them. I mean, I've never heard anybody say that the, the impression needs work, which might be a good or bad thing, depending on how you look at it. But I, I'm looking around for scripts that might need a Brayburn VA, and I haven't been able to find any yet. Oh. Here's the thing. Why don't you try reading fanfic starring Brayburn? I might do that actually because when uh, at Las Pegasus Unicon, I don't know if you if you guys subscribe to Mike the Microphone, but um, recently he did uh, a reading of uh, a fan fiction called Tom Hanks in Equestria, and at Las Pegasus Unicon, I'm the guy that suggested he read it, so he did, and I'm actually kind of surprised and thankful that he did. But um, on Ali Upser's stream uh, a while back. I just, she went out to go get some lunch, and so I decided to entertain the viewers by reading Tom Hanks and Equestria, and all of them in the stream chat said that I did it better than Mike the Microphone, so that's that's quite a thing to say, considering that Mike is very well known for doing good readings of, of fiction, True. so I might do that myself, actually, so we'll see. Do it, Philly. I, might, I want to subscribe, because I want fanfic to be read to me. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> no, but seriously, and then those um, audiobooks on iTunes. True, yeah. indeed. I, I do that with Squeak Anon's work. But no, um, <laughs> the, the thing is, right now, um, I, I want to concentrate more on you. you. You said that you do Game of Pwns. Um, what do you do there? Because some people might not. I play, it's basically a Let's Play thing live where I play the hardest games I can possibly find. Or I played I Want to Be the Boshi, which is extremely difficult. Um, right now I'm not playing a game that's extremely hard. I'm playing something special for my viewers. Uh, it's an RPG for the Game Boy Advance called Golden Sun, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm playing that right now. I won't be able to do my show next Thursday on May 2nd because I am going to be out doing something in Worcester, Massachusetts, where, as a matter of fact, if you live in the New England area, you should come to the Oasis in Worcester, Massachusetts, May 2nd. Doors open at 6.30. We're going to be doing a rave to uh, raise money for charity. And I'm going to be one of the DJs. So if you want to watch me DJ live, make sure you go. Yep, yep. Will there be a live stream? No, there won't be a live stream, unfortunately, because the whole thing was put together very quickly and we won't be able to get it streamed. So, so you heard it, guys. If you want to see DJ Kalkos live, you know what to do. True, true. Yeah. Especially if you live in Massachusetts, you really don't have an excuse now, do you? Yep, yep. Now I wish I lived in Massachusetts. <laughs> I wish I could go to the U.S., I mean, yeah, true. One anywhere days, in the U.S. Guys, You're saying, pardon? One of the one of these days, guys, you'll be able to take a trip. Just make sure you go to the correct parts of the United <laughs> States. We'll call you when that happens. Okay. Yeah. 
No, but uh, I I remember being in your stream, the Game of Pwn stream, and from what I experienced, it was damn entertaining. Where you play the game and somebody help you along in the chat, and oh boy, was it fun reading it. Oh yeah, I remember that. It's funny because I played the game so much, and yet the guy that helped me in the chat, his, name, his alias was Scootaloo Hopkins, the guy knew so much <laughs> more than I did, it was scary. Yep. <laughs> I, I remember that part where he, you found something, and he said it to you before you found it. Yeah, pretty much. I love that part when he said, go for the what sort, elf sort, elf blade. I don't know. Yeah, go for it, because it helps you a lot, but... Going, getting it is going to be hard. Uh, and you rage a lot. I, I like that. <laughs> but seriously, guys, go to Calco's stream, um, Game of Pwns. It's really entertaining. But not next week because he's out of town. Yeah, yeah the, the, the next stream will happen on May 9th. Awesome. I, I'll try to be there because it's really entertaining. What time is it, by the way, on the May 9th? It starts at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, PM. So it'll start at 8 in the morning for you two. Okay. Awesome. So, um, here's the thing. We, I think we kind of forgot to ask you this, but how did you join um, Celeste Radio? Um, what happened was is that uh, in November, I was uh, working on a podcast with a few friends called New Lunar Radio, and I was found by Allegro and Gigabit, and um, they, they were on Celestia Radio at the time with the Pixel Perfect Pony Show, and DJ Shamrock got in contact with us and said, hey, you guys are pretty cool. You want to come on Celestia Radio? Well, unfortunately, half of us did and half of us didn't. So, unfortunately, the podcast split up. Um, myself and Darkman joined Celestia Radio, and um, Sin and uh, Teutonic were left behind. But I do still keep in touch with Sin, because he's really cool. And I've been on Celestia Radio ever since. Uh, I believe I officially joined Celestia Radio on November, I want to say, like, 12th or 13th. Oh. And my first cast was the week after. Oh, awesome. So how has it been working with um, Celeste Radio? Because recently one of our uh, friends, uh, Bruni Time, they joined Celeste Radio. And our uh, parent podcast, uh, Bruniville, they joined Celeste Radio. So how has it been working with them? It's it, Well, I don't work necessarily with the guys from Bruniville. They... They 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 uh they put their work on Celestia Radio just for more exposure, and so we're affiliated with them. But they don't actually we uh, work with us like, outside of conventions. Like in conventions, we work hand in hand. Like at Las Vegas, this Unicon, the entire stream was set up by almost all of it was set up by Apple Cider, so that was that was very big. But um, Brony Time, I work with them because I'm very good friends with those two Alpha Alpha Brony and Five Iron are fantastic guys. I love them. And um, I was one of the principal reasons why they were put on to Celestia Radio because I suggested it to them and I pushed them onto Shamrock and Shamrock found them and liked what he saw. So now they're on Celestia Radio and you can hear them every Monday night at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, actually right before my music stream. So definitely check them out, bronytime.com. Uh, they're great, great people. True, true. Um, but uh, I, I also work with um, Tarby. I don't know if you guys know who Tarby is. He's a uh, really awesome progressive rock musician. Uh, made songs such as like "Rejected" for Balloon Party and other stuff like that. Oh, he and yes, I are very yes. good friends. I, w- I work with him because he DJs for Celestia Radio. Uh, Feather was also recently added to our roster. Um, she's a co-host for uh, Cider's uh, Drinking Stream, which isn't actually a drinking stream, although I'm pretty certain they drink while they stream. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, she's also going to do some graphics for us. And she's also a very good friend. Um, so it, it's it's really great just to work with them and to work with everybody else on Celestia Radio. Shamrock, K-Brody, Qcom, um, uh, Gigabit, Perry, Darkman, uh, DJ Silence, uh, Darkfire, um, Plowstocks, PhD, and Shamrock. They're all great. Wow, so awesome. It sounds like you uh, don't regret joining them. No, I don't regret it at all. Like, I've made so many great friends and met so many great people and found an outlet that I can use to express myself. And it's it's great fun. I love it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Yeah. Dan, you got any questions? Oh, yes, I do. So, uh, Calcos, um, do you consider, probably in the future, I'm not so sure how old you are, but uh, in the future, do you consider getting a career in the media and especially in broadcast? 
I am looking eventually when I'm ready. I want to see if I can secure an internship with a radio station because I do really enjoy doing radio DJing. I enjoy it a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. And I would love to be able to make a career out of it. So when I'm ready, that might happen. Might be a thing. You might be able to catch me on the airwaves someday. So we'll have to wait and see. Well, you've got, personally, I think if you put Celestia Radio on your CV, it would look pretty impressive. I, yeah, it's already on my resume, actually. Yay! Awesome. Yeah, but, the MBS show is on my resume. <laughs> oh, awesome. No, but... Uh, no. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I was trying to say that um, it's cool because um, way back when in the olden days where people wanted to do um, go into media as DJs and stuff, it's not that easy because you need to have experience in stuff. Now with the internet, <laughs> you could be a DJ <laughs> any time you like. Yep. You were saying that something before I cut you off? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I was going to move into another question, which was basically prior to Celestia Radio, you know, do you have any music knowledge, music training, music education in the formal sense? I have actually had plenty of music training. I'm a, I'm a, tra- I'm a professionally trained vocalist, been trained since I was uh, eight years old. I uh, ah. I also played I I've also played the the alto saxophone and the piano since I was ten. Although I don't have access to a piano, and my alto saxophone was stolen two year uh, like uh, actually it was uh, three years ago, which oh. sucks terribly. So the sorry thing to hear. Worth well, the thing was worth four thousand dollars, but um, <sighs> it, it's it's okay. But I I have I am a trained musician, so that. I guess that helps maybe a little bit, but I haven't created any music in a while. Wow. Uh, so, uh, are you, you know, a uh, grade 8 musician? Uh, I'm a vocalist, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a vocalist. I sing. You, I mean, did you take uh, examinations? Yeah, actually, I did take classes, I took examinations, and uh, I did a lot of singing in my youth. Okay, oh. so, um, I'm sorry, sidetrack a bit, but uh, what sort of uh, vocal training did you go under, you know, classical style? Do you sing in a choir or more of solo work? All three. Ooh. Wow. I sing, I sing, well, I, I sing a variety of stuff. Basically, jack of all trades, master of none. Do you sing with a local choir? No, I don't. Uh, I haven't found any local choirs that I actually enjoy around here to be able to sing at. Oh. And not only that, but I'm, and now I'm busy with, with Celestia Radio and with Pony in a Box and with actual work now. I actually have an actual job. So, Yay. ah. Yep, so time is an uh, issue. So, uh, well, it might be worth looking out for things like, if you know, last year there was the Massive Smile Project, the Long Way from Equestria Project, those amazing stuff. I'm sure that, you know, yeah, I'm everyone gonna, will love I'm gonna see if I, Yeah, I'm going to see if I can get involved in that stuff because, I mean, I'm really good friends with uh, Robble, the guy who runs Bronies for Good. So if they, do, ah. if they do another group project like that, I'll definitely throw my hat in the ring. Actually, um, they're doing Seeds of Kindness 3. And Wait, Robble, what? I know that. Yeah. yeah, that I know. And I'm, I'm and, waiting for them to say, like, hey... This is the thing. Would you like to be in it? I'm, I'm waiting for Rommel to, uh, to let last, me know. Thus I heard from Bronyville. They said they're looking for people. Um, you should just email Rommel. He might say, sure, uh, submit something. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I got to contact him soon about uh, another project. Okay, okay, okay. So before we let you leave, I, I need to ask this question because in the beginning you said you were fighting game Brony. Am I right? Yes, uh, so I'm, a me- I'm actually a member of the fighting game Bronies, which is self-explanatory is a group of Bronies that really like fighting games. So, could you explain to us what I that see is? Where this is going? Yeah, I know, but still, could you explain it to us um, what you guys do and how you guys operate? Basically, it's it's nothing that ridiculous. I mean, we work closely closely with uh, main six devs who run who who made Fighting Is Magic, and now they're making their new project. Um, basically we offer our assistance when we can, but usually it's just a group of bronies that are friends and like to play fighting games. It's, it's not like we, we run any big projects or anything like that. Oh, okay. So you at guys... Least, at least not right now. Uh, so you guys don't go to, well, from what I remember of Las Pegasus, no, no, sorry, not Pegasus Unicorn, um, EQ, EQ LA last year, you guys did some kind of fighting tournament there? No, it was Canterlot Gardens ah, yes. and it was... The fighting game Bronies assisted in that. I wasn't a member of uh, of their group at a t- at the time, but at Canterlot Gardens, um, they did a quarter circle hoof, which uh, was was a fighting game tournament. Yeah, I, I seen the I seen the main six stream, and it was pretty awesome. Yeah, it definitely was. Okay, as a fighting game fan myself, I, I must know what's your favorite fighting game. Street Street Fighter, without a doubt. I am a huge Street Fighter enthusiast. 
really now, um, any specific Street Fighter you enjoy? Um, two, uh, I, I basically enjoy all of them. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, uh, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition version 2012, soon to be version 2013. I, I like them all. Street Fighter Alpha 2, Alpha 3, uh, Capcom vs. SNK 2, they're all great. Have you played the original Street Fighter? <laughs> The original Street Fighter is ass. I know. Oh, it's so bad. Is but, that a good thing or a bad thing? No, it's bad. The, okay. It's terrible. Like, the thing is, the original Street Fighter is so absolutely terrible. Oh, yeah. Like, n- like here's an analogy I want to say. Look at Street Fighter now. No, just look at Street Fighter 2, the original version. Take that and throw it out the window. It's not the same. No, the controls are terrible. Like, you'll spend the whole match trying to f- throw a friggin' fireball at us because the, the control responsiveness for being able to do quarter circle movements just wasn't there yet. Yeah, and true. that's what Street Fighter 2 resolved back in 1991. It allowed you to actually do those movements with ease. True, true. And I do remember playing Street Fighter 2. So, um, you enjoy Street Fighter. Do you enjoy any other games like Mortal Kombat? Maybe um, I really, I really enjoy Marvel vs. Capcom two and three. I I enjoy Tekken a little bit on the side. Um, Soul Calibur five, I was really into when that game came out. Um, I also really enjoy uh, Ogon, um, Miyuso Kyoku. Melty Blood is good. I, if it's a good fighting game, I play it. I don't like to saddle myself to a specific jo- um, model of fighting games or oh. a specific um, type where where whether it be 2D or 3D, I play them all. Oh, okay, cool. Because personally for me, I do enjoy uh, the occasional fighting games like Street Fighters, Marvels. Also, I'm a big fan of King of Fighters. But, eh, well, that's me and my enjoyment. Like, I do I don't want to play Mortal Kombat, but the uber-violence in that game is not my cup of tea. But that injustice looks pretty good. Yeah. Well, anyway, those are our questions. And um, I think we should move on. Yep. So anyway, that was our guest, DJ Calcos from Celestia Radio. Um, thank you, Calcos, for coming on because it was thank a... Thank you for inviting me, dude. It was a blast talking to you, seriously. Like, another fighting game, Brony? Yay! I, I thought I was the only one alive. No, this is, like, amazing. <laughs> Norman just found his friend in fighting game, Bronies, and I just found a guy that does professional music as well. I went through professional vocals until government exams took it away from me. Oh. I did up to grade 6, so yeah. Oh, well... Whoa, you're perfect for us. Join the crew. Hey. <laughs> okay, but but seriously, uh, you're most welcome to come on again if you uh, do uh, so pleased. And if you want to promote anything, do tell us and we'll just put you on. Oh, in oh, fact, why don't you do it right now? Do uh, what? Well, right, I already did the promoting. I mean, I have on Celestia Radio, Monday and Wednesday nights, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thursday nights on Canter Lock TV, uh, 8, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I also work with Pony in a Box Studios. You can find them on Squeak's YouTube channel, Squeak and On. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at C A L C O S three two three, and on Tumblr, C uh, Calcos C A L C O S dot Tumblr dot com. I let it in the show notes, so don't worry. People will know you. I'll make sure of that. Yep. Yay. This show will change your life. Well, we hope. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, anyway, moving on to the next topic is shoutouts. And my shout-out goes to you, Calcos. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for being an awesome guest. Thank you just for being yourself. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That, that's quite that's quite the compliment. Seriously, uh, I've interviewed a lot of guests. I, inter- I talk to a lot of people, and you're the one person that I enjoy talking to, even though we derp a lot in this episode. Yeah. Dan, what about you? Any shout-outs? Well, DJ Calcos, it's been great talking to you as well. Sorry I was late coming on, but it was... That's really, okay, dude. It was really, really fun talking and getting to know, you know, a brony who's just got so many talents right now. True indeed. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, I mean, I can't wait to hear, you know, the music you're going to come up with when you get the time and, you know, when hopefully something comes out and Brony's for good, I'll be there. I'll be first in line to get that album. Oh, well, you could just do it now. I hope so. Anyway, Calcos, you got anyone to shout-out to? Um, I want to take a shout out to everybody at Celestia Radio. I've already done that, so I'll take an extended shout to everybody in Pony in a Box Studios right now. Ali Oopster, Bagpipe Brony, Jack, Coco Nehru, DJ Squirrel, Wolfie, Fangirl, Sketch Pony. Let me see here. Uh, Hannah K, Hamish, Jenga, Lauren Goodnight. Absolutely Lauren Goodnight. Jam Jar, Sonic Sons, uh, Magic Lana, Llama, Ordon Rift, Squeak, of course, Pony One Kenobi. 
QD Brony, and everybody else that works uh, in this wonderful group. I absolutely love them. I would also like to uh, give a shout out to my girlfriend, Emily. I love you. And a shout out to Rommel Pants from Bronies for Good. He's awesome, and I have to talk to him actually after this podcast. And all the Brony musicians that I know, uh, DJ Tar- um, Tarby, Cyril the Wolf, Odyssey Eurobeat, uh, Rita Chan, uh, Commander Hurricane, Flutterwatt, EHT, S'mores, um, Joe the Loaf, Matthew Mosier, Mega Fork, Feather, all of you guys, you're fantastic. Well, and I'll just throw in one more Brony musician to that pile, The Living Tombstone. I just grabbed your album yesterday night, it's fantastic. True, true. The, Kelkos, the people that you mentioned, I want to interview them all, seriously. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Give Norman a big checklist. Oh, checklist, yeah. And also, I need to listen back to the interview so I can write down all the people that he says. Uh, oh, oh, and aviators, aviators. I'll never forgive you. Oh, um, aviators. For te- I'll, I'll never forgive you for having a test on the third because he was supposed to be at the show that I'm playing on, uh, on uh, next Thursday on the 2nd in Worcester, Massachusetts. He was supposed to drive down and, and play there, but unfortunately it's final season. He has a test on the next oh, day, and I'm man. like, I can't perform with you? Damn it! Okay, here's the thing. If Once he finishes test, you drag him down and play live on stream so everybody can listen to it. <laughs> what, whatever. I'll get the opportunity to see him again someday. True, true. Anyway, let's move on. And if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach us, well, you can reach me at norman at the MBS show dot com. Dan? You can reach me at daniel at the MBS show dot com. And also you can reach us on Twitter. The show's account is at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E, and I believe Calcos has already... Stated his twice, but we'll state it one more time. Um, at Calcos323 on Twitter, calcos.tumblr.com on Tumblr. Yes, true indeed. And also... Oh, and Celestia Radio's um, URL is ponify.me. Sorry, forgot to clarify that. No problem. I'll just add it into the show notes. Actually, just, yeah. a, just a little thing. The stream URLs, something like molestia.ponify.me, right? What? <laughs> I remember that stream URL is very weird because I have to manually add it to my uh, tune-in. Yeah, it's, mo- it's molestia. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I was wondering, what am I connecting to again? It was the first time I listened to Celestia Radio. Okay. No, it's fine. We're, we're a classy station for classy people. Oh, yeah, we're, well. also, we're also the oldest station within the fandom and arguably the most prestigious among the brony musicians. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I remember back when uh, Alicorn Radio by our friend Ethan Powell was starting up, he sent a tweet over to it. Celestia Radio is like, what, another radio station? And Celestia is like, hello, we're the first. <laughs> yeah, they, we're, the, we're the first by a long shot. True, true. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Um, and also, like our Facebook page. Well, links pro, pro, pro. You know what I do. Anyway, um, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And Calcos. I you? have been DJ Calcos. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye-bye.
these lies Can't pretend that this is fine But the fate of the town is now on the line I'm just a changeling Whatever fate brings I'm just a changeling That's what they're telling me I'm just a changeling Whatever fate brings It's still the same I was born to make believe I'm just a changeling Whatever fate brings I'm just a changeling That's what it's gonna be I'm just a changeling Whatever fate brings I'm just the same I was born This I need to hear. Please do something because I love Brentel Floss's work. <laughs> I love Jack Black's work. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> do something because okay. you you cater to us. Yay! <laughs> uh, give me, give me, give me just a second, okay? And, and, and uh... okay, let me look for this thing. Um. Okay. All right. You so you, you want to hear some Brentel Floss? Yes, oh, yes please. please. Once again, the world might fall prey to an ancient evil. Once again, we're hurled into darkness and great upheaval. Those who can enlist, let's unite and we'll fight together. We must save the crystals or orbs or the moon, whatever. Come, let's fly. We'll sail where the wind may take us through that starry sky. Because apparently back then they had ships that could do that. Awesome. Sounds good. really I good. I agree 110% with that. Sounds really good. Oh my god, that's so awesome. Thank you. It's amazing. Dude, you have to get back to the music, you know. 